And sometimes a few of the people get caught up in the net. Well, I'm proposing stopping that. There are stiffer sentencing laws for drug offenders than there are for rapists. That is such an exaggeration, Miss Jackson. Is it? Well, I spent the morning with a young woman in prison whose only crime was that her boyfriend was a dealer. And guess what? She was sentenced to 10 years without parole. He made a deal and got two. Now, there is something grossly wrong with this. And when I'm in office, I want to be a part of correcting that. Mandatory minimums of federal laws. And as DA, I carry them out as justly as I can. Those laws are unfair, Mr. Allen. Everyone who uses drugs is not a criminal. In fact, let's conduct our own poll right here with this audience. How many people here have actually experimented with drugs? You know, done a little pot, tried some cocaine, ecstasy, acid. You're telling me that no one in this audience has ever experimented with drugs? Nothing here can be used against you. I'm just asking for a little honesty. Mr. Allen, are you ready to put this entire auditorium in jail? Because by the number of hands raised here, I'd say we could get about five years each. Hey, it could be worse. We could be down 30%. Mad? No. Disappointed. Hey, you played by your rules. Let's see what happens. I want to win, Nick. No, you don't, or you wouldn't have made those statements two days before the election. See, you think you can change the entire city's thinking with one town hall meeting. I thought I could enlighten them to some glaring realities. It's not their reality just yet. But it is when it's, it's their tax dollars paying for prisons housing drug addicts. <laughs> yeah, but they think those prisons are going to keep them away from the boogeyman. And to them, drug addicts are the boogeyman. Fifteen percent isn't that bad, is it? No. Oh. Hey, it ain't over till it's over. Hey. Hey. Where's everybody running off to? I called off rehearsal. Mrs. Michaels called the principal? Actually, I talked her out of it. So there's no issue about the cigarette anymore? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. Well, what would you say, Blanche? Mary Elizabeth, can't this play be just about a black girl and a white girl forming a friendship amidst all that chaos? Is the cigarette important enough to sacrifice that? At the time, it was important enough to spawn a friendship, a time when I was bold enough to steal it, and my friend was bold enough to hide him. And, you know, we probably would have met regardless. It's, it's just hard to give up something that symbolized so much. Nothing but stay white and pretty. Maybe I should open it and see why this letter is so important. No! Please, no! Oh, oh. Yeah, this is juicier than I thought. Tickle her, Renee. What? Uh-uh. She can't kill both of us. Only one of us will get hurt. Well, it's not going to be me, Emmy. How'd you find out I was ticklish? One of your boyfriends. I can't wait till I get my hands on that Jesse Smith. What is it? A map. A map? Where do you think it goes? Are you sure we're going the right way? It says go north on this trail. 
Does it feel like we're going north? I think so. What are we even looking for anyway? I don't know. She's your grandmother. <sighs> Let's go this way. I mean, we're wasting time. Come on, give me the map. We gotta find. What is it, Emmy? <laughs> girls so long. Teresa wouldn't give us the map. I knew I shouldn't have trusted her. What happened? How'd you find it? I made a small donation to the city, and in return, they let me take Port Dixie to a new location. <sighs> but why'd you have us make all those signs? Because I wanted to teach you the right way to go about fighting for things. When you're about 17 or 18, then you can barricade yourselves inside boxcars. So it's all ours again? It's all yours. So we can still redecorate. Why can't we just leave it like it is? Because curtains and flowers brighten up the place, Emmy. No way am I letting you turn Port Dixie into some girly place. Emmy! All right, all right. We'll compromise. Flowers. No curtains. Agreed. <laughs> some tea girls. Thank Thanks. you. Tonight really is your night, win or lose. This party is just to say thank you for working so feverishly in the last few months. From the beginning, you have supported me as your candidate for DA, and I just want you to know that your hard work has not gone unnoticed. We fought a good fight, and I can't think of a better group of people to go into a battle with. So, enough about all that. Let's just party! <laughs> It's been so great, Renee. Working. Party. You. What would I do without you? Thank you. You hang in there, Renee. <laughs> Golly. Oh, no matter what happens, Renee, I am proud of you. And your father would be, too. Thank you, Mom. Enjoy this. Okay. <laughs> great speech, boss. You so deserve to win. Thank you, Lakeisha. Where's Joe? Oh, he said he likes watching the election results from the privacy of his own home. Which means he's got a hot date. You got it. Somebody get that woman a drink. <sighs> Heard anything? Not yet. Only 49% of the precincts have reported. Is that good or bad? Too early to tell. How's the play? Oh, no play. No play? Ten-year-old children should not smoke. So, is this a vote for no smoking? Yes. Yeah? Well, I keep asking Kelly to be responsible. I guess I've got to try and do the same. Mind if I steal her away, Mary Elizabeth? <sighs> Well, I was just burying my soul. This DA thing is so important. Take her away. <laughs> oh, this is the part I hate. How bad? Not that bad, considering. What I put you through? I've survived a lot worse. Now, um, not all precincts have reported yet, but, um... I lost. Yeah. You did. But you knew that. Shall we inform the troops? No, let them... Let them enjoy the party for a bit longer. I admire the hell out of you, Miss Jackson. You never wavered. Just don't forget that beer you owe me. Hey, just tell me when and where. 